We're gonna have a fun one today. Actually, it's kind of gloomy. Um, the economy is hitting the shitter lately, and it's okay. It's okay because we were accelerating way too quickly and you have inflation that came along with it. It's okay to have a reset. It's okay to have a reset. I started Cardinal in 0809. There were no jobs, 25% unemployment for 25 and under. I mean, it was really bad. I had to go take an interview with Enterprise Rent a Car that told me I'd be washing cars in the tux in Atlanta summer, all summer. So that's a no-go. And I don't think we're gonna get back to that. But let's talk about what our healthcare, what our provider groups need to do to adjust to this new reality. And y'all are so tough. You just went through two years of COVID. We can definitely make it through an economic reset. This is good, it'll be healthy. We're getting way ahead of ourselves on the economy. This will be nice, things are out of control. So let's talk about during the reset. What are the things we need to do as provider groups to make sure that we are accelerating patient acquisition in a meaningful manner while not breaking the budget? So Lauren, what's the first thing that comes to mind? The economy's changing and you have a provider group coming to you. What are you advising them not to do? Let's start with the, what are the big things you're saying? Things have changed, well, let's not do that. Yeah, I mean, I would say if the budget is gonna get tighter, which it might, and if we need to focus on the people that need care versus like elective you know, procedures, then really cutting out maybe some of your upper funnel would be a place to start. Now, there's two schools of thought here, right? Do you ride the brand and work on building that in a time when demand doesn't exist? If you have the budget, great. But if your budget is getting cut, focus on bottom of the funnel. Let's maximize capturing the patients that do still have a need for your service. Yeah, it's tricky because upper funnel's cheap now. You know, you've got CPMs down 30 to 50% on most upper funnel channel, like Jen Chase, what is it? Down that, so it's like, do you buy now and you, you owe that in a year or two when things are accelerating again? <laughs> do you look at like the maturity of a provider group when making that advisement? Like someone that doesn't rank top three for their keywords, like guys, why are you running the radio ad right now? Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Um, if you have a solid foundation, if you've been working on building this over the last two years, like we've been talking about, you know, you, you had the capital, you did the website, you did the SEO, you, your Google business is in a great place, reviews, you've done all of those things, then yes, I think there's a tolerance to maintain some of the branding. Use video, use the, the channels that do have the lower CPMs. Don't, you know, throw money at the wall on, you know, assets and, and channels that are super high cost. Yep. Um, but if you have not done those things or you're creating a new MSO or you're a newer group, you, there is still an opportunity to build your foundation and mm -hmm. that should be where the budget goes initially. And, you know, I, I think the runaway economy we've had over the last year has, it may have gotten some groups ahead of themselves and they were starting to look more at branding and upper funnel mm -hmm. faster than they should. So this is a nice reset. If you had a lot of that stuff that you're planning and working on and paying for TV spots and creative, and you didn't have the basic stuff, this is a good time to get back to making sure reviews are really good, you're ranking really well, Google Ads is solid, tracking is good, take a reset, the economy will start to increase again next year when we when we get through this little thing. Okay, so it depends on the maturity of the provider group. Any specific provider group type specialties that you see, you think are gonna be more impacted by this little fun downturn that we're having? Yeah, I mean, I would expect, and, and this happened a little bit when COVID hit too, right? it's gonna be need-based is gonna continue. You cannot change the fact that someone broke a tooth and they need an emergency dentist. You cannot, hopefully, I really hope in today's world that people who need therapy and psychiatry are gonna to continue to, to get that care and not you know, back off because of, of economic reasons. So when you look at healthcare specialties that might get hit harder than others, and you look at something like behavioral health, I think we've got more behavioral health clients than just about any agency in the country, including the biggest one in the country. What do you think? Like they're going to be perfectly fine. They take, they have every kind of payer partnership with specialties without all the payer partnerships or without cash pay. Who's going to get hurt or needs to adjust their marketing or their messaging? And what do you think? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, cash pay businesses are are probably going to take a hit when when patients are tightening their purse strings. Um, hopefully, if you do have the the payer partnerships and in behavioral health in particular that your patients are still gonna, you know, see you as a necessary, yeah. you know, uh, healthcare need. Yeah. Um, areas like cosmetic dentistry, am I gonna go get my tooth fixed? Am I going to call my plastic surgeon? Like this may not be the time for that. So in those areas in particular, uh, do you need to be 
doing a ton of like upper funnel demand generation or do you really just focus on the, the smaller subset of patients that do still seek you out That's right. if your budget is being cut then you probably want to cut the upper funnel yeah 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 and don't go do TikTok right now, everybody. Getting too many damn requests for TikTok ads. Okay, so less fish are biting. There's less patients that are gonna be out there looking for care because they got dropped from their commercial insurance because they got laid off or they don't wanna do the elective thing because cash is tight. All right, and we talked about kind of reducing the upper funnel or are there other things you can do to try to grab more of the few fish that are in the sea? Yeah, I mean, let's, let's be realistic and hopeful that a recession is still a short term, you know, maybe a year, two years, however long it takes to rebound. I think dropping all of your upper funnel is definitely the necessary short term adjustment. But when it does come time to come back online, when the world does kind of bounce back, knowing what you want to say to people, how you want to say it, what your position is in the marketplace is going to be critical. So take the time when things are a little bit quieter yeah. to align with your leadership team, you know, everyone's value proposition is that they take insurance or that they're open tomorrow. What really sets you apart? Is it the quality of care? Do you have a unique perspective on bedside manner or is your in-office experience different? Like really, really sit down and think about what sets me apart. That is not the top five value props that every other company is using. Yeah. And then make a game plan, get those solid Think about how you're going to incorporate those into video and into messaging yeah. so that when it comes time to kind of reopen our, our upper funnel strategies to go out and create demand again, that we have we have the opportunity to earn that business because we really are different. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So with economy changing, we talked a little bit about creative and getting aligned with uh, leadership on value propositions and positioning. Should you also get aligned with all of your leadership on new expectations for patient volume increases and how you're gonna drive demand and certain things you need to be okay with them cutting to focus on the things that are gonna drive demand now? Yeah, I mean, when we think about what is it going to take to acquire a patient? It's likely going to be that, you know, cost per clicks are going to go up. Uh, okay. It may be get a little bit more expensive. I think just having open lines of communication with either your agency or the in-house team that you retain to execute those channels and then communicating that on a regular basis and update on what the marketplace looks like. If you have five providers in your group, it's not gonna change that their books need to be filled. So your tolerance for what it's gonna to cost to acquire a patient is gonna to have to go up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're still gonna be looking, a new new patient acquisition is gonna be the name of the game. Okay. It's just not gonna be as profitable. And it's not gonna be because everybody's gonna be competing on Google instead of running up their phone. So clicks there are higher, impressions are cheaper up their phone, Facebook, Instagram too. It's kind of this, uh, this catch 22. One final question, Lauren. Our clients are the smartest provider groups in the country. We know that, they know that, everybody knows that. You can be too. Um, if you were, you always tease me that you're gonna quit this job and I won't let you. If you wanna go in-house and run a provider groups marketing, what would you be doing right now? Would you say to leadership, an, another CEO, let's just say you had a different one, you'd say, screw that, we're not pulling back, or yes, we're pulling back. Would you say, let's go crazy, let's accelerate while the economy's making it cheap? What would you do? I mean, I, I, if the capital is there, I don't, I wouldn't want to be so short-sighted. I understand that that is oftentimes what has to happen and that's okay. But if you can have the foresight to, to understand, listen to what the economists are saying about how long things are going to last and not completely put the brakes on, if you can keep a little bit of activity, if you can just do a little bit more than what your competitor is willing to do to stay ahead of them because it's all going to come around full circle. Yeah. I would I would be fighting to just keep a little bit of of, you know, the branding and messaging yep. going. Yeah, yeah, don't stop. Don't stop. Tell her it's cheap right now and keep going, but make sure the core things like website SEO, Google Ads are done correctly. Um, remember guys, don't don't get panicked. Don't watch CNBC. I love those guys. I I, I, watch, I watch it every day, but it really just hype like Fox News or CNN. Don't watch too much of this stuff because at the end of the day, two years ago, a little over two years ago, we had a, a huge economic hit. And our clients didn't slow down, they accelerated. Sometimes I even thought they were crazy, like, oh my God, how long is this COVID thing gonna last? And the ones that kept moving forward, kept iterating, kept innovating, didn't turn the whole thing off, it done really well coming out of it. 
So don't pull back on the whole thing. Just do the core things right. Go back to those if they're not being done right. And keep iterating and innovating and bidding on things like Upper Funnel. Make sure your brand is available to everybody coming out of this thing, okay? All right, keep the accelerator panel down. Thank you for joining us on Ignite. And thank you, Lauren, I guess, <laughs> for also being with me on Ignite.